I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started using the win gauge control within the NetAdvantage Windows Forms tool. So locate the NetAdvantage Windows Forms toolbox in Visual Studio and scroll down until you find Ultra Gauge. Here it is, double click it, get it onto the form. Now the control in itself when you initially place it on the form is completely empty. There's nothing in it. and the, f the thing that launches by default is the designer, so you can use the designer to easily flip through the APIs and add gauges and configure each gauge and do whatever you want, or you can choose a preset as I'm going to do now. I'll walk you through the API so you get a better understanding, and I'll also do some explaining while the presets load up. The control in itself, as you see behind the scenes, is blank, and the way it works is that you can add as many gauges to that one control as you like and you could position them all over the place so you could come up with fancy type of gauges and you could add multiple needles multiple ranges and all sorts of things like that to give you that unique looking gauge and three types of gauges that you can work with in this control and you can mix and match them together in this comp composition of gauges is radial gauges the radial gauge is the first type as I scroll through some of these presets you notice there's some really well done presets that were made by our awesome graphical design team. Here there's some really fancy ones and when I say composition of gauges I mean something like this. So you see how you have one gauge here which is the radial gauge but then right there that's the digital gauge. Here's two radial gauges. Here's a small one moved over to the side and here's a big one taking over the majority of the screen. And that's basically the principle of what this control is built upon to allow really extreme customization. So these are all the radial gauges then we have linear gauges which are linear in nature with a numeric or whatever kind of range that you like and either a needle marker or a bar marker that moves along the line to indicate the current value here are more composition gauges where it's a digital gauge and a linear gauge together and finally the digital gauge where you throw a string at it and it renders it according to the lit and unlit um, segmented displays that are there so to get started quickly I'll just grab a preset let's choose this knob and I'll click OK and you can even interact with this here in the designer to kinda of give you an idea so you can set these markers so that they can be moved around by the end user or they could just be read only so let's click apply and close you have lots of cool um, ways to interact with and set up the actual API properties through that designer so if you're not too familiar with the APIs and you're new to this control, you'll be able to get around fairly well with the designer. But after watching this video, you'll get a very good understanding on how to start building really cool uh, gauge-powered apps in your Windows Forms apps. So I now have the gauge here. So let's take a little walk through the APIs through the Visual Studio property window. So first and foremost, we click on the gauge, locate the property window, and you want to jump to the gauges property. It's a collection of gauges. So right here you have the collection editor by me clicking that little ellipse button. I could click on add and notice I could add a radial gauge, linear gauge, or a segmented digital gauge. So just like the three types that I showed you before, I could just keep adding as many as I want. So we'll just explore the properties of the radial gauge. Each different type of gauge has different types of APIs or a slightly different object model because it makes sense, different types of gauges but this one will just focus on radial gauge type and what you want to do is you want to go to the scales collection and click that button to launch its collection editor there's one scale here and again you could add more a scale usually has a start angle and an end angle which determine where it starts and where it ends so let me just close it out real quick it starts the start angle is right here so if I were if I were to set to zero it would start at the bottom here and then as you rotate clockwise the angle number gets bigger and bigger and bigger and that's where the end angle is another thing I want to talk about while I have this visual loaded is wherever you see extent the word extent like in the APIs you'll know that value zero starts at the center of the, radi of the radial gauge and the further you move away the larger the number gets that's how it works so here is zero and as I start moving up here the start extent of this marker is a certain value it's probably like it looks like maybe 45 I'm just guessing and then maybe the end extent here is 50 so starts here 
draws and ends up there. And then there's other properties like start with, end with. So start with is like let's say 30 and then the end with is 0 so it forms a solid sharp point. So let's jump back to the APIs to that part. So radial gauge, the scales, and I'm on this scale. Then we have labels, you know, we could specify the format string, you know, what should display in that. Then we have the frequency, which you know you, it dictates every ten, you know, the frequency is every ten, then orientation. So that that's basically all that we have here. The other thing that I also want to show you is the marker, the markers essentially. Oh, actually, one other very important is the axis. We need to give it a start value and an end and end value, and a tick mark interval. So that's what it is. It starts at zero, and ends at one hundred. So think about it. Think of it like as a track bar or a slider control, where you get a start value and an end value, and then you want to grab the value from the marker, which is the next part of this, the API of each scale. Each scale has a marker or markers, more than one marker, if you like. So let's launch this guy here. So notice I'm I'm three levels deep now. So I have one needle in my markers collection, and you could give it a value so right now it's just some value that was added and a couple of things remember the start extent and end extent I was kinda close I said like 45 so the end extent is 65 then the start width is 30 then as we go further out it's 20 and then the end width was 0 to give it a, a sharp point and the other thing that's very important is the anchor and let's see, we want to start off, the extent is zero. The anchor is basically, think of sticking a nail at the, f at the um, focal point of the needle. Wherever you, you stick the nail in, that's where the needle rotates. Do you want to stick it in extent zero? That means you're, you're shooting a nail through the needle at the very center of the gauge. So that's where its anchor point is. Now if I were to set this at like 50 or something, then it means I would be shooting the needle through at further away from the center where it now anchors kind of, you know, in an in a off the center way. That's like if you ever see like those jog shuttle knobs like on some stereo equipment, they have like an indent on the knob and when you rotate it, it kind of moves around like the outer edge. That's kind of how that works. Similar to that, so my analogy is a little strange, but that's kind of one way I think about it. But if you see if you see some of the other presets that make use of the extents, the anchor extent set at a higher value, it behaves just like a jog shuttle button, where the the, the indented um, point of the knob kind of rotates and is always kind of sticking around towards the outer edge. And then, of course, all of our APIs throughout this object model you can give it a key so that you can reference it programmatically in an intuitive fashion. Alright, so let's click on OK, OK, and OK. And let's see, let's place, oh we have a label here, I already have a label from before. So handling events and getting values out of this and using them in your app. So I'm going to click on the gauge again and go to the events and we're going to scroll down and the most popular event is is the marker value changed event. Let's double click that and get an event handler in there and you can basically grab the value of the markers and this is how you work your way through it. So you get e.marker.value and you want to just two string this one. It could, I believe the value is a double if I'm not mistaken. Um, depends on the you know depends on how the needle was set up so that's something that, that you set on the needle but you just two string it cast it make sure you do that here's another scenario you want to also do like say if you have multiple needles like for example the other um, presets have a bunch of needles or if you add many needles just do like a case statement and what you want to do is you want to get the e dot marker dot key you want to like just do a case statement on this like is it the temperature needle is it the min, you know, min, min something or the customer something needle? Give it whatever key that you want. 
and then execute whatever logic that you want. Now another another thing that you want to do, not specifically in this event, but let's say if you um you know you had like a form like say in the form load event or any other event that you have or method that initializes the controls in the form and you want to set the value of the needle, this is how you do it. You want to go to the gauges first, right? Because remember you have you have multiple gauges. So I'm going to access the only gauge in this gauges collection by using sub zero. Now I'm going to hit the dot and show you some IntelliSense. Very important to know this. There's not really that many properties in here that make sense because keep in mind there could be three possible types of gauges in this gauges collection. So in order to, for you to access the actual properties that you're looking for for this particular gauge, you have to cast it to the appropriate gauge type. That's what I'm missing here. So let's go back and this is a radial gauge. So I'm casting it. And by the way, look, I have the infragistics.ultragauge.resources. But if I were to blow this away, just very easy, just hover over it, just type it in correctly. Click on this little element here and just click on using that namespace and it will work. And we just wrap this up here. Dot and now here's where we have our properties that are useful to us all the different types of APIs that are available only to the radial gauge so you want to jump to the scales collection again we're working our way down the API just like I showed you before in the Visual Studio property window down to the markers I only have one marker in here so it's marker sub zero dot value equals let's say 55 or whatever make sure you put a value that's between the min and max and that's how you set the value so let's just run this and see what it looks like so here's our gauge and I start moving it around notice that the label is getting updated with the actual value so you could format that value you could pretty much do whatever you want but just to give you an idea this is how you would work with a gauge and this is just and I'm using this as an input control so you could use your gauges as just a read-only display or a data visualization um, you know some you could create a lot of dashboard type apps uh, instrumentation panel type of apps I mean there's a lot of stuff out there that's running on hardware like instrumentation panels that like you know look like um, you know they're built many years ago and using industrial equipment a lot of that stuff you know depending on if you get the right computer interface can be moved over to software as long as you have the correct hardware connected to the PC with the correct drivers and the correct application built in such a way that makes intuitive sense for your end user types you can reproduce those instrumentations into you know software that could just be easily ported over and you know uh, spread across easier than large equipment so this is the gauge control and I'm sure you'll be able to find many uses for this in your existing apps and in your new apps thinking about engineering the use of gauges for data visualization as well as end user input Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.